Hi, I'm Peter Haddock, and I am in the biggest noise chamber in Europe, and probably one of the biggest in the world for low frequency folks. And this is where my journey through the Innovation Centre starts, where they test the equipment in this chamber so that they meet all the regulations for the industry. So in order for me to take this journey, I'm going to have to have somebody that knows all about it. And I'm going to be joined here today by Alish, who is the Innovation Centre tour guide for me today. Alish, come and join me. This is so weird. I'm shouting at the top of my voice. There's no echoes. There's no anything. There's microphones over here and there. Wow. Why so big? Uh, because we want to achieve a standard which is valid for us. And standard is saying that these microphones, which you can see around, uh, are 10 meters from the operator head. So that's why it's the chamber so big. And it's also because we was first who are testing indoor. So we was a bit afraid that our competitors will claim that we are not according standard. So that's why we build it absolutely according that. And so, folks, in the middle here, you have got a Bobcrap product, as you know. And this whole setup here allows you to operate this machine. And so, right at the top of its revs, right at the bottom of, it, uh, of, its, of its revs, and, but literally, therefore, understand all of the, the noise that comes off the mat and radiates from that machine. And that's so important when you're developing products and when you're developing particularly new products when you're, when you're looking at working in low noise zones and low, envi low noise environments, as well as, you know, keeping it quiet for the operator as well, isn't it? You know, we are testing or we are measuring two parameters. It's a operator noise and bystander noise. And it is not only final measurement, which we are doing here, uh, which you finally uh, see on the decal on the machine. But here we are also tuning the machine. For example, compromise between cooling performance and noise uh, of the machine. Yeah, so there is a lot of testing. It's not just the final test uh, of our machine. And by the way, we are testing here also machines which are currently in production. Right. Because we have to sample them every year according to the standard and check if everything is according, let's say, rules and uh, decals which are on the machine. Fortunately, folks, you can hear me here because we're in the, in the noise chamber, which just sounds weird on your ears and everything. But this is not just part of the innovation center it's very big but this innovation center is 50 million pounds spent on it in 2014 as its development and there's lots more to see now so it's time for us to quietly get out of the noise chamber so now with alish here in the machine area which again when we look at the factory we've got all of the different machine tools but here you've got a very speci specific piece of equipment isn't it and why do you need that and what is it uh, there are two machining centers uh, both are cnc and uh, because we are on a proto shop we are building here let's say chassis of the machine so we giving uh, to the chassis the final accuracy and on these machines we are building uh, small castings uh, small weldments and also hydraulic blocks right more accurate uh, more uh, difficult shapes of, uh, of parts. And this is really important, folks, because this happens before it goes to the supply chain. So when we got uh, supply chain partners that would maybe providing you with those products in the main factory conditions, you're showing them exactly what you want and, and your engineering team's designing it all, isn't it? This machine is giving us, us many other equipment, independency from our suppliers. So we can be much quicker in yep. production of prototypes. Yeah and uh, we also have quality in our hands. And that's really important. So come on, folks, we're going to carry on walking through here because much like my factory video, if you haven't started my fa or seen my factory video, go onto contentforindustry.com. Oh, by the way, that's the big other CNC machine we were talking about. Um, we also have the raw materials here as well, don't we? So primary production. Yeah, and so that is literally showing people we're going from the, the, the complete new machine on the on the drawing board as it were to using the the basic components to machine uh, those components what so what we're using here um, and what we've got the behind us in, in primary production we are working with um, uh, rotational parts like pins and bushings and these kind of things that's uh, pretty standard 
And on the other hand, and this is a little bit more interesting, uh, especially because of investment which we did, and on that we can show uh, how independence is important for us, is the sheet metal work. So here you can see uh, laser cutting machine, yep. most modern type of the, of the market, plus uh, the bend press where we are bending parts which have to be bended. So there is stock of material, uh, there is uh, cutting machine and bend press. So the other thing about this, folks, is we're not just talking about traditional diesel machines here, are we? You in this part, in this innovation center, one of three around the world, folks, is fundamentally using electrification and, and the components that you need to cut and shape for the electrification process, isn't it? Yep. Uh, this machine is able also cut parts from brass, from aluminum, for, from uh, stainless steel. And many contacts uh, in our EV machines, which we are developing here, are made here. So again, it's about uh, the independency and delivery time for parts for the prototype. And of course, folks, that means well, what we're doing is we're enabling change. So we're, as we move through to the next section, this is all about you and your engineers. There's 150 of them in total in the innovation section, isn't there? Um, and coming up with new ideas, new designs, but testing them before they get into the factory floor. And we'll talk about some of the accreditations that you have to go through as well. You're testing those as well, aren't you? The independent accreditations that you have to get from new machines. Yes. You've got the facility to do that here as well, haven't you? <clears throat> yes. Uh, this independence, it's not only about prototype shop, as we are expressing, but this is also about test department, which you will see. So there is a lot of tests. Uh, which normally have to be by, done by notified body, which means uh, state laboratory with round stamp. Yep. But we are, let's say, under their certification, under their authorization, and we can do it ourselves. Now, this is all about welding, and it's all about making it possible to see how the production team can do welding processes, isn't it, for new machines, and, and also how you can build in the robotics that we've got in the main factory as well. Absolutely. We are welding uh, weldments for our prototypes, um, but if you compare that with factory, yep. uh, there is uh, general purpose tables, not one purpose fixtures. So guys who are working here are, let's say, more skilled from the campus. Yep. And they can also use their experience for better manufacturability of uh, our prototypes. And also they can give some recommendations uh, to our design engineers during the welding process, during the building of prototypes. And that is what it's all about when it comes to taking prototype folks. And that's why you might see uh, the machine that actually comes out from a prototype scenario it's slightly different because that's all about buildability and quality built in, isn't it? Um, over here, folks, uh, we actually have uh, the pilot area. So this is where we're talking about new ideas, isn't it, over here and, and pilot project. You know, engineering work, it's not ending uh, by the drawings, uh, by the prototypes, by the testing, but we trying also introduce new products into the factory. Correct. And because we don't want, um, let's say, compromise production time, uh, we are testing that here in Innovation Center. And machines, as a new products, go into the factory with um, all the instructions, um, uh, fixtures, and these things, just plug and play into the factory. Yep and we can start immediately with production. So this is the pilot line where we are testing assembly process for factory. And so folks, also when you're looking about innovations, we don't just talk about innovations in the context of new machine, new machine, new machine. You've got some great machines out there in the marketplace already. And as those machines develop and as technologies develop, you're building more into them. We've just seen your innovation team talking about camera detections, talking about uh, joystick controls, absence of uh, the operator and all of those sort of things have to be tested uh, in the laboratory as well so when we've got the products that we see behind us we're also talking about how can we upgrade them on yes. an ongoing yes. basis can't we yes we are not working only completely new products yeah. but we are taking care about product during this uh, lifetime of the of the machine because it can be seven years yeah, yeah. and our customers can have uh, let's say different view during the lifetime of the machine so we have to react on that. So we are developing new options. We are introducing new technologies, improving machines for our customers. So not only built of completely new products, but also we are upgrading uh, our current machines. 
Anna, folks, we all know that the weather has been slightly different around the world recently. People are talking about climate change, people are talking about difficulties. Six months' worth of rain in the UK that's quagmiring the site. But it does get very hot and it does get very cold in different parts of the world. So we're going to go and magic ourselves to an important chamber right now. So folks, when we said chamber, I didn't realise we're in a NASA-style chamber here where the engineers are all this side, and we've got the testing area outside here. We've also got a cold chamber, goes down to minus 40 or up to plus 55 next to us. This is where all of the magic testing happens, isn't it? What are we doing out there right now? Here we are testing cooling performance of our machines. So machines are loaded by temperature around, plus mechanically uh, the powertrain and auxiliary is loaded and we are checking if uh, cooling performance of our machines is adequate what we want. Right, so therefore when we know we've got a prototype in here, we're doing all of that real world testing, the, 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 right. the pressures they would be under uh, in that environment. The cold chamber, also really exciting to see how cold that can get, but all of the impacts of that as well, that's really important, isn't it? Yes, sure. Uh, because this is one extreme and in the freezer there is another extreme. So higher temperature, low temperatures. So startup of the machine we are testing in the freezer. And if we are in some hot temperatures, we are testing if cooling performance is good enough for our machines. So no matter if it's hot or cold, folks, it's about one tough animal being able to start, get on with its job and do the, the job of keeping itself um, performing to the maximum potential, isn't it? Absolutely. Right, time for something else. Come on. So finally, folks, I am on top of a seismic block. That's not doing that movement, but it sounds really crazy to have a seismic block. You just think about that in earthquakes and things like that. This is the durability testing, folks. It's the end of our journey here um, with the Innovation Center. What's behind us? Because it's a wrapped prototype, isn't it? Yep, uh, that's a new prototype of the board group, and here, we are testing the durability of these component and try to accelerate the test, save some money and produce it much quicker than we will test in real conditions. For example, on our polygon. So the other thing is folks, I, I will nip downstairs and show you the amount of power that's going into this seismic block. 1000 horsepower in here to actually perform all of the hydraulic capability to shake that seismic block that we've got up there in the testing area. Wow, that's a lot of hydraulic power. You don't need all of that in an excavator. So we talked about the power downstairs briefly. What is, why is that important and how does that help the testing work and, and the structure of this building uh, and the integrity of it? You know, because we trying, let's say, accelerate all these tests. So we are increasing frequency and forces which we are putting into the tested components. But finally, you will choose the border when you will destroy the building. That's why we are sitting on this seismic block, which is insulating these vibrations from the rest of the building. We don't want to destroy it. Certainly don't want to. Lots and lots of money and investment being put into this. So we've had the whole journey here, folks. The 50 million pound facility that was born in 2014. Now we've got to the seismic end. It's a wrap for this video, folks, because there is yet another innovation coming down the line. Been fantastic to see you. Thanks for the big journey through innovation, through the noise, through the structures, through the pilots, through the testing, through the phases. Been great to see you. My pleasure.